have a question for him. Do you want me to stop it? Now that it's been brought to our attention, uh -huh. what is it that we do? Okay, that's a great segue into what we're going to do this morning. Um, Nick is not going to be here <clears throat> because he has to work today. And uh, it is not my desire to touch what he's doing because of his flow. And neither do I feel like we should touch it because of his flow. And as a, 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 in place of that, what I want to talk about is the reason it was necessary for us to be in Philly. Not this time, but the last time also, both of them. Um, <clears throat> in the beginning, what's the word? In the word? No, in the beginning, <laughs> uh, just so if you're paying attention, in, in the beginning, um, we were going to Philly to do a conference, uh, a, a, a um, not a conference, a um, retreat, as we were doing here. And George was coming down for the retreats every time we did them, so we were going to Philly to reciprocate and, and do a retreat. But we had a serendipitous experience. We went for one thing, but we encountered something totally different than what we expected. And, and, the thing, and the thing that we encountered was we were actually on a mission as opposed to a retreat. And we could very, we, could, we were sensitive and we could feel the change that was needed. We could feel it in the air. And we could also sense how we were changing at the same time and how our direction was changing at the same time. So, the question um, was, why are we here? Well, this time when we went, um, we had still yet another serendipitous experience. Because things were such that we were constantly in the mix with uh, people who were in recovery from different things. I mean, constantly there. Where we the last time, we were not. Um, I mean, from, from Thursday until we did our last session, we were constantly in the midst of that. Um, so, what helped me to see the reason that we had to go to Philly was the structure of City Hall, which is in Center City. The, there are, there are, the, the way it's laid out and the meanings of all the entrances. I mean, you have um, the south entrance is, represents Africa because of justice. The west entrance um, represents um, the, the Europe, not Europe, I'm sorry, America, because um, and the lower level is where the criminals were brought in. The northern entrance is Europe, uh, which uh, is the executive government, and the uh, east entrance is Asia, and, and um, I just remember at this point what Asia was, but each one of those represent a segment of government, um, judiciary, that's what it was. So, so what, I'm, what I'm saying is that in the center of that courtyard is the essence of what this country is and supposed to be, both in one place. And one of the things that we experience in the courtyard before we get into the other meanings, one of the things that we experienced in the courtyard both times, the first time we went into the courtyard last year, everyone left. And there was a musician playing the flute. And the last song he played before we left was, um, what was that? For at least. Amazing yeah. Grace. Amazing Grace. I couldn't remember that. That was, the, that was the last song he played before we left. This year, when we went into the courtyard, it was crowded. And when we looked around, everyone was gone. This guy began to play a violin. A violin. 
It gets worse when you get in your 60s. And, <laughs> and it, especially when you, when I got all these you draw things running through my head at the same time. Uh, I'm trying to hold things in my head that I'm th that's coming to me. Um, he began to play the violin. And as he played the violin, you could feel the music floating through the air and the people leaving. So we gathered in the center of the courtyard, and the, and the most, the, one of the things that, that um, was, was strongly recognized is that while we were in the center of the courtyard, meaning we meaning uh, the teachers in, in the center of the courtyard, the people who came through, came through with a hushed voice. Where you prior to that, they were talking. And it is not, they were are not unaccustomed to people standing where we were, because people come there all the time to stand there to take the picture, a picture because it's actually zodiac symbols. And people come to stand on the zodiac to take, you know, photographs themselves. And when we were there, there were a group of people there, and everybody was talking. But when, when our group got there, it just silenced. Now, <clears throat> we are, we were in Philly. Well, let me, let me change that. We are in Philly, because the energy is still there. We are in Philly for the purpose of redirecting the energy that has brought so much calamity to so many people, forcing them to be more concerned about their human state than they are concerned about the spiritual state of being. Got me? Now, I do not think for a moment that this website found Janice uh, haphazardly, or she found it haphazardly. Uh, I, I think very clearly that that um, this, when we go through and talk about what all of this means, uh, it's going to help us have a greater clarity of um, what we were there, for, the reason for which we were there. Now, there are there were there are said to be twelve zodiac symbols. Yes. We dealt with why Philadelphia itself is important, or you get it okay. later. Okay. The reason Philadelphia. Thank you. The reason Philadelphia itself is important is because it was the central government for this country at one time, and um, we had to before going to. City Hall this time, we had to go to Independence first. And, and now keep in mind, this is what, what we dealt with. We had just dealt with um, people who, were, who are in a seemingly hopeless position because of the recovery that they are fighting to hold on to. Then we go to Independence because um, one of the teachers felt we needed to be there. And when we feel that something needs to happen, we don't question it. We just do it. And as a result of that, we experienced a quite a few things while we were there. And then we went to City Hall because one of the teachers felt we needed to be there. And again, when we got there, the same thing. Now, we went from what was seemingly hopeless to, um, to in, uh, Independence uh, Mall in, in, to a place where everything be, it started. And to City Hall, where all of these symbols supposedly represent the images of the world. So Philadelphia was not chosen by us. Uh, Philadelphia chose us. And, 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 uh, and Philadelphia chose us before we entered our mother's wombs. And I, and I say that uh, so uh, confidently because of the connection that brought us to Philly, George. So it had to have taken place long before we were conceived. And we are here for such a time as this. We last time talked about symbol, didn't understand them. This time we saw something um, uh, that we had not seen before. When we were walking out through the, the portal, we saw uh, one of the teachers pointed out the, the um, the different races that were represented carved into uh, the, the pillars. And at first, it appeared that they were there in a, in, a, in a laborious position holding things up. But the more we looked at it, the more we began to realize that we don't know what they're there for. 
And then when we began to look, we saw, we saw for the Native American, we thought it was a bear, but it's not, it's a wild boar. Uh, we saw for Africa, a tiger. And we saw for Asia, an elephant. And we saw, huh? It's a lion, isn't it? No, it's a tiger. Wait, what? Go on. Africa? Mm -hmm. So in, in the... Why do you get a tiger in Africa? You don't have tigers in Africa. Uh, that's what's there. That's the, that's the explanation they give. That's the explanation they give, yes. Anybody? We're going somewhere okay. with this, I promise you. Okay. And there was a bull for... Um, Europe, I think. Europe. Now. And the elephant was Asia. 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 So um, I'm trying to decide whether we need to do the zodiacs first or this. So you started this. So, okay. First of all, you recognize that there were no tigers in Africa, which means that um, symbolically, Africans don't exist. The next thing is, symbolically, every representation of everybody of color is a wild animal. The only domesticated animal that's considered, especially during that time, is the bull. Is the, uh, bull. And that represents strength. My question is, if you're dealing with a Native American, why not a buffalo? Because that's what they're most associated with, mm -hmm. as opposed to a bull. Mm -hmm. If you're dealing with Africa, why tiger instead of lion? And that's one of the things that, that um, everyone with whom I spoke concerning this, when I said Africa, the first thing came out of the mouth of lion, because you would expect that. And that helped me to see that this is deeper than just some carvings. They were put there for a reason. And, and, and uh -huh. As I say, my immediate sense of that is to confuse. And well, see, because the buffalo, if you recognize the buffalo in association with Native American, to me you're giving whatever the right word is. You're recognizing the the power yes. and authority. Yes. But if you want to confuse all that, then screw up all the animal associations. And exactly that. That's exactly it. The okay. the only the, the the one of power is the bull that's controlled, all the rest of them are wild and out of control. In other words, everything we represented was uncivilized except the European. And that speak volumes about <clears throat> what transpired in this government, what took place, how things were and still are with the government of this nation, of this world. Because every symbol of the American goes beyond, <clears throat> goes beyond America. It stretches into Europe. Even when you look at the entrance, the entrance does not just do America. It also stretches into Europe. And, and, and why is it <clears throat> everyone is, is lumped together in terms of the, um, the Asian, the African, uh, the Native American, and the European? But the, but the power and the um, control is, is directed toward not just America, but also Europe. And, and that in itself speaks volumes of, of, it, of, of where we are. Now, to, to, the, to the human eye, it's magnificent artwork. To the human eye, it's a sight to behold. And believe you me, it really is. To the human eye, it means absolutely nothing except how detailed everything uh, was called. But to, to the third eye, or to the, the eye through which we see spiritually, through revelation, we begin to see that there are no such, there are no symbols there are no symbols that government deals with or have dealt with that do not have a hidden meaning. All of them do. The only people 
that I know who do not accept, understand, or care about the flows of energy are people at churches. Christians. Indigenous people recognize it. And people who are in search of um, their spiritual identity recognizes it immediately. And <clears throat> if I say recognize, I'm talking about the presence of the energy and we be, we are energy type thing. So what have you said that concerning those symbols and entrances, um, I guess it was appropriate to do that because we ain't gotten inside yet. Um, we were in Philly to uncover. And the things that we were there uh, to uncover uh, were the things that Richard began talking about. To bring to, to, to um, everyone's eye, not the, 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 the overt racism that has been covert up until this point. And because I, I remember the Baki case in California, Berkeley, California, with the whole affirmative action thing. They started then and it just kept, you know, until they got to the point where um, it was um, enough on the Supreme Court to reverse that. And, and there's never been any proof anywhere, out of all the studies that have been done, there's been no proof anywhere that affirmative action ever kept a white person from going to school. There has been no proof of that. So, and, and there, there was a reporter, I, I, I to say this. There was a reporter on MSNBC, I can't think of her name right now. Um, she is a contributor to MSNBC. And she, for years, she researched it and tracked it to see if there were any cases where a white person did not get a slot so that it could be a, front, so a black person or a Hispanic person would get it. And, that's not okay. and the one who brought the case from Texas was a bad candidate. So and the people got, what? her grades were not what they were supposed to be. Uh -huh. And the people who got in ahead of her, grades were better. So, well, didn't they throw that back? It, that's why they threw it out. That's exactly the reason they threw it out. So, um, we uncovered those things. At, at, at some point, we will uh, talk about how to deal with it. Why do, why? There is, there, there is absolutely nothing shown that we're not supposed to handle. Now, when I say handle, I'm not talking about when well, we will go out and do these things. When I talk about handle, I'm talking about desire. Serious desire. That's what I'm talking about. Now, uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, defer to, uh, to Sheldon and Janice uh, when we began talking about the Zodiac. The symbols that's in the center court uh, because <clears throat> there was a 13 zodiac. Huh? I didn't even see those symbols when we walked through there. Um, I remember seeing them from last year, but I'm like, this is cool. Yeah. I remember seeing them from last year too. So, Where are you talking about? I'm confused. City it's Hall? City Hall. We, city Hall. Now we're in the center court now. We're in the courtyard. That's city Hall. It's city Hall. Okay. We came through the entrances. We saw what we saw. And we see what the entrances represent. That's not our terms of what it represents. That's what they have, have written online, what they represent. Okay, can I ask here for anyone who would know, Sheldon, is there any uh, writing that outlines this? Yes, that's okay. where we get it from. Okay, I don't know those, not, not, I don't know those sources. Okay, I would like to read that. Well, hold one second. I didn't go. I'd like to read that. It's hard to try to put it all together just hearing it. The source is City Hall. The people who wrote the history of City Hall. Their website. Their website. That's where it is. The ones, the, the representation of the animals, what, they, what we talk about they mean to us is not there. However, everything else is there, including what the entrances mean, represent the different, like the continent of Africa, the Asians, the Native Americans, uh, American Europe, all of that sale is on the website. So you will get the website before we leave. Oh, there it is. Okay. 
Um, if you yeah, we were in the North Portal where um, we saw the sorry, what is it? I'm stupid. What's the website? Have you ever what? Philly Silly City Hall? Well, I mean, I can you, Google you it. You can actually Google I Philly will. City Hall and it will pull up the virtual tour. I will Google it. Okay, do the, do, okay, the North Portal um, is talking about... Sorry. <laughs> what? It's kind of hard to see. That's what I read on my phone. <laughs> so you're telling to me the, the, but the City Hall website recognizes the animals but doesn't the, doesn't talk about the significance that i could understand yeah huh yeah it'll it tells it's all you there. that Every, the elephant represents asia that the, you know, they would at least say that yes okay yes. so what's there they do, on, do honestly present either. go to uh the north entrance Janice. the north entrance yes that's not okay go back go to the north face The world theme in the North is a representation of Europe. The world levels are dedicated to the history of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, as the North was designed to be the grand legislative entrance. Okay. You, you see? Okay. So that, that's the source. Okay. Uh, after we, when we get to the courtyard, we're going to, you can pull that up, we're going to see the whole. It doesn't have a picture. I know, I'm talking about, you can see how it's set up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, when we talk about it, the courtyard, the way it's set up. Uh, when we talk about the um, the north face, the south, the entrances, it spells it out on the website. Does that you understand what I'm saying? It spells it out on the website. Um, when we when you when we look at um, the the animals, it's on the website. The when we look at the um, the courtyard is on the website. However, just like nothing else in this country that means something is spelled out in detail, this is not either. This is not spelled out either. The one of the things that um, that the, and, and just let me point this out to you, and, and you would probably remember some things when I say this. You cannot build anything to block the, the um, view or the entrance between the back end of the capital and the monument. That's, that's not going to happen. Watch the monument on the wall. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm in, okay, I'm in DC now. Okay, help us out. Okay, yeah. okay now. I figured it happened. Yeah. On the, right. uh, we assume that everybody knows about this. It's right. the guy thing. Yeah. Uh, on the front of the Capitol, that's where the inauguration speeches were made until Ronald Reagan. And he moved it to the back of the Capitol. And if you follow the history of his presidency, you will begin to see the decline of this country economically, suppression of wages, destruction of labor unions, overt racism, raising his head, and manipulation of everything that were, was designed to be a safety net for people who are not able to take care of themselves and their children. That's not insignificant. That is not insignificant. And from that point to this one, the inaugurations have been on the back of the Capitol. And with each inauguration, no matter who the president is, it gets progressively worse for those who are <coughs> middle class or below. To the extent that now America has the smallest middle class in the world when it used to have the largest, because people are barely making it. When you have people with MBAs uh, on the cash register that make these, something is wrong. So what I'm saying to you is that symbols play a very, very important role in, in this country. They, and not only do they play a very important role, but they also um, are there in order to 
manipulate the flows of energy for specific purposes. And if you can keep people ignorant of that and, and thinking that it's so far-fetched, you can control them um, with a lot easier than you would be able to if you didn't. Look at what happens when we talk about democracy. We, we talk about exporting democracy, but yet you overthrow a democratic government in Iran and put the show in. So, so this thing is not just started. It's been going on uh, for years. You help um, the Saudis suppress people who want to vote because it's a kingdom. So, so you, you cannot have it both ways. There is, um, there is a book that you ought to read and it'll help you see a lot of stuff. It's called the, what is it, the Economic? Economic Hitman? H H Economic Hitman. Oh, yeah. That, that will spell out exactly what's going on. Now, it appears to be just economics, but it's more than economics. It's never just economics. It's, also, it's always spiritual. I that's think, what I'm trying to say. I think for me, that's the connection that I've sensed that I want to better understand, for want of a better term. Recognize the, the physicalness, the politics of it, I've seen since I spent two seconds outside the United States. I mean, the whole World Bank, IMF yeah. stuff. Right. Yeah. And, and it actually was quite profound to have this guy write this book who was himself that person. So yes. it's 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 the what do you call them? Uh, it's, it's the people who speak out who whistleblowers. are whistleblowers. Yeah. We don't call them that. Yeah. Always. <coughs> it's just depends on who's interested, sir. Or how much information they have that they can really put out there. So. True. In fact they did a nice little analogy of that the other day but that's something else. Yeah. Good. Oh yeah they did. Yeah. Um yeah. This, this guy who's, what's his, I can't remember anything today. Snowden. Snowden yeah. versus what in the mainstream has actually been talked about and no one considers that. Yeah. The CNN report. Yeah. Right, which I thought was very interesting. Um, so somebody's recognizing it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Anyway. So, the, so as you said, you, you want to understand the connection between the two. That's what we do every time we come together or talk to each other on the phone. That's what we do. We, we are seeking the revelation of the connection between everything that is. And not only I believe this, but we as a group believe that these things were hidden until such a time as this. When there are a group of people who, go, who, who are willing to do what it takes regardless of what it costs. It's, to me, this is the spiritual equivalent of the civil rights movement politically. And when we were in the civil rights movement, our group functioned like no one else was doing what we were doing but us. Now, there were many people doing it, but that's how we functioned because it kept us on our toes. That's how we functioned spiritually here, great in faith. Philadelphia. That's how we function. As if no one is doing this except us. The connection between South Carolina and Philly, you can write a book on it. You know, I mean, why did Robert Smalls take the ship and go to Philadelphia and then stop in D.C. or then stop in Indianapolis, you know? Why did he go to Philadelphia? Out of all the places. Why he didn't stop in Delaware? You know what I'm saying? He, he dropped his family in Philadelphia and came back to, to be a part of the, to fight in the Civil War. So there, there are connections between the two. And these connections are not insignificant. The, the, um, the, uh, the beginning of um, the government, as we talked about the seeds of it, Philly, and the, the seeds of the secession is South Carolina. And, this, and the, the soil of the seed of secession in South Carolina sowed the seed in Union. Governor Gibbs. That's when it first started. So, so we have to uproot. It's like, a, it's like a budded plant. If you don't dig it up completely, the buds continue to reproduce. And, and, and I know uh, on the surface, it's a daunting task to talk about uprooting something 
that has uh, that is so deeply entrenched until it has built a culture around it with people who are who feel like they are destined, quote unquote, to rise again. That's, it sounds like a daunting task. It's only daunting if we try to do it from a physical, political, economic perspective. Sociologically, psychologically, we're not going to do it. It's, it must be done from a spiritual perspective, and the reason is because we are not fighting against flesh and blood. This battle is not ours, it's the Lord's, and it's Yahweh's battle. But we are the instruments of that battle, and the battle does not take place on a physical, bloody battlefield. The battle takes place in the other realm, and, 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 and we must recognize that it takes place in the other realm. And our coming here, our coming together at Your Faith, the, the um, retreats are for the teachers are never without purpose. I don't sit down and ask, I, I don't sit and say, well, you know what, it's time for another retreat. We don't do that. And even if we try, it never happens because no one schedule fits. So we are the battle axe that must be submissive to the powers that have created us in order for us to be effective in, in uh, uprooting this culture or, or at the very least expose it to the extent that it can be uprooted. Does that make sense? So, um, are you ready for the uh, 13th uh, Zodiac Sun? I had you on mute. Sorry, I said yes. <laughs> Not mute. Um, my mic muted. Okay. Okay. So the thirteenth uh, zodiac, which is in uh, the ring, Janice, you can help me out with technical uh, terms. <laughs> but it's in the ring. Um, the regular, normal, um, twelve zodiac uh, signs is Ophiuchus. Uh, juice. And Ophir juice has been known and been there for thousands and thousands of years and everywhere. Not everyone has known this, but people have known this. But the significance of it is it's not very bright, but it's actually the serpent bearer. And within the uh, serpent bearer, it talks about uh, that serpent. So what we talked about a few weeks ago uh, with Nick as far as um, that uh, knowledge of yourself um, and the energy from the past that was made available being made again for us to be closer to reaching uh, consciousness. So that is why this is a pivotal, uh, a pivotal point and that's just something that's not talked about. Now you're going to tie that in with the 13th in regards to uh, the biblical sense of it? Uh, yeah, the biblical sense of 13 is that which binds everything together. Uh, and that's and that's because of um, uh, the corners, like the corners on the square, um, uh, a cube is counted as one, but it has twelve sides. Uh, that's uh, twelve lines of, uh, and lines, and the thirteenth is the corners that holds it all together. Um, the, the 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 sages talk about um, Messiah being um, having the the uh, twelve. And that represents Israel, and the 13th representing the uh, Levites. Um, the whole idea of the of uh, 13 actually uh, came out of Egypt, and it was put into play uh, by the Hebrews uh, when uh, the 12 tribes uh, began to um, come into focus. Uh, the 12 sons of of Jacob, and when Joseph. Uh, divided the tribe between the twins, um, that also made the 13. But even prior to that, it was 13 because of the Levites. Uh, and, and the Levites were the ones who kept the spiritual energy flowing. And it, it and, and um, um, Ophiuchus? Ophiuchus? Oh, Ophiuchus oh, is, as Sheldon said, is not, does not shine that bright which is extremely powerful in terms of opening, uh, 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 preparing the way for the third eye to be opened. Um, right. Yeah, yeah. It actually sits in the um, middle of the Milky Way uh, galaxy, and it's 
its uh, position of being in the center is supposed to, not supposedly, but is more representative of the higher self and of um, ascension by it being in the middle. And you can go ahead and I'll bring up the, uh, the snake's part, the snake parts, and how even uh, Western society looks at it in Greek mythology. Uh, that's, uh, I just, you just said that that's um, Barbara. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, she did from her chart. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, it, and that is not surprising. Say that again. That Barbara sign. Barbara sign. Oh, really? That's not surprising. When you think about what we've already <coughs> said concerning it, over you and in, in, in relationship uh, to to what over you is not represent, but is, and what she is. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. What's the sign? Oh, for you. Oh, what is the sign? Oh, what's the sign? Draw it. It's a snake and a. Yeah, it's a man who's actually like holding out a, a snake, and the snake is just going through his uh, his hands, and he's like, he's not only has he captured the snake, but he's almost like he's presenting the uh, snake, which is why he's the snake bearer. So even when, the, uh, for example, in the garden and how we look at it in, uh, from a biblical standpoint as the snake being terrible and then all of these other uh, um, religions, uh, they look at the snake as being very, very powerful. It's yeah. just because we were not necessarily given the whole story from um, the way that the Bible was translated, etc. Even, uh, even Jesus was telling the disciples to be wise as serpents. So the serpent actually, and with the true knowledge, the serpent represents knowledge of yourself and finding out who you really are. And we've been taught to be afraid of 13. Yes, which is also very powerful, but we've been taught to just not worry about it. It's like this, um, this sign did, did not just jump out of nowhere. I mean, it's been here all along. It's just uh, wisdom that is withheld. <laughs> Oh, you know, to the masses, basically. And, and, and it's simply because the, there is an understanding of the power that's in, in, the, in, in, in the circuits of energy. There are people who understand this, and they use it to their advantage. And if you want to find out who the they is, find out who began teaching that 13 is bad and the serpent is bad. Then you will find out where the power, whose hands the power is in. It's almost like follow the money trail. Right. You know? Yeah. Well, I have a question then because, well, the Catholic Church basically. Can you hear Audrey? Th um, sort of instituted this okay. negative thing right. about the 13th because, but they chose that day, the 13th, whatever, to to um, basically carry out this um, inquisition against the Knights Templar. Yeah. Right. Right. So, did they choose that day deliberately? Yes. Like sort of cutting off a certain energy. Yes. Yes, because I mean, from yes. from one perspective, it's like, oh, the thirteenth is is so terrible because someone is uh is dying and being slaughtered. On the other end, if you're the person who is actually bringing uh, on that attack, it's a pretty good uh, darn day. <laughs> you're being victorious, so it's definitely misleading. Well, when you look at what the Knights nice Templar's relationship was to the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. and the idea that the, the Catholics believe believed that the Knights Templar was holding artifacts of energy flows. And, yeah. and they, they were going to wipe them out because they were, felt they were more powerful than them. Mm -hmm. But yet, to this day, where did the Knights Templar go? Sweden. Or was it Switzerland? The bank accounts. Switzerland. 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 That's what the, the, the courtyard guard at the Vatican come from where? Switzerland. They are, they are trained in Switzerland. So there, is a, there, there was a, a punishment, but a reconnection. Mm -hmm. Because they, all of them were not slaughtered. Some of them did escape, and they were never heard of again until banks began to flourish. 
And that's, that's the reason you um, have these secret Swiss accounts also. That's where it came from. Mm -hmm. so, so that 13th was a very significant day. If you knew how to uh, control the energy flows, uh, you could assure yourself of, a, of success. And people simply read history and think, oh, how, like Sheldon said, how bad that is. But these dates are chosen for reasons, especially by those who uh, wield this power to manipulate energy. Well, now you're making me think, uh, go back to bits and pieces of thoughts about what money really represents. Money, control, energy flow, and it makes people complacent. You get enough of it, you're complacent. You don't have enough of it, you're trying to live. The, I remember when the, when, the, when the bubble burst in California, the, the technology bubble, what did they call it? Anyway. The Silicon Valley. The Silicon, com. huh? The dot com. Dot com, yeah. The yeah. Silicon Valley. That was on purpose. There were too many, um, that yeah. dude who bought the too basketball many. team, Cuba, whatever the name is. Too many billionaires. Uh -huh. Mark Cuba. There, there was a, people like him began to question what's going on with the government. They, were, they had too much time to think. They did not have to work anymore. They were creating these companies and selling them and, now, and developing think tanks. So they had to burst that bubble. It was getting too powerful in the hands of people who they could not control. So, um, you ready to move on, Sheldon? Yes. So even in the, um, which is funny, and this kind of uh, correlates with what we were just talking about with all of the, well, with the serpent being looked at as being, well, being demonized. So in Greek um, mythology, uh, Ophinochus, uh, he was basically, he was the son of Apollo, and he had a mortal mother, where his mother died. And then sometime after that, he found some uh, snakes that were eating some uh, herbs. And he basically became um, a medicine man. And he got in trouble for Zeus because he basically found a way for um, mortals to live forever. Which is, well, that, that is an alliance with snakes because they always shed their skin. And because they always shed their skin, it's like they forever um, stay young and never die. The only way that they're supposedly able to die if it's not from a violent attack is if they actually eat themselves and swallow themselves, which has to do with, uh, follow me here, which actually has to do with uh, God experiencing himself. Uh, I'm not quite sure if you can follow that, but that's what it uh, deals with. But the, the whole point is, is that also the little um, medical sign that has the wings and it has the uh, rod and has the serpents uh, going around it, why would we use uh, serpents to represent life for someone getting healed? That makes absolutely no sense after we demonize it, but that's where that comes from. Any questions about that before we move? Okay. Um, back to Philip. The 13th is in the center, and it's not about controlling as much as it is about Ophiuchus um, opening up, uh, uh, creating the environment for the third eye to be open for everything that's represented in the other 12. And to draw um, connections between all of them, even though they're different, in such a way that would allow them to work together as one unit. Does that make sense? It's like spokes in a wheel. And if there are differences, they are reconciled um, with Ophiuchus, the, the 13th, uh, bringing about that reconciliation. Are you following me? Now, when we were, well, the other 12 we are familiar with, are we not? Hello? Yeah. We are familiar with those. Yeah. This is something that um, 
that also uh, uh, jumped out to me. When we were in Philly, even before we got there, Jenny said something. I need to do the birthdays. You remember that? Yeah, I'm looking at them now. <laughs> I need to do the birthdays of all the teachers. That was before this. So why did she think that? Why did she feel she needed to do that? You see? This, this is, these are no, this is no coincidence. And when we were there, uh, there were exactly 13 people in the center. And the next day, Tiff and you and there she left. Can you say that? And, and, and the thing that, that, I, that um, I, I looked at was the, I, that, that all of us were inside the circle without even being conscious of it. We just moved inside it. And from the lips of, um, the, um, of masculine energy came uh, words of how this whole circuit of energy would be complete by virtue of freely coming to South Carolina. When we were there, we did not think about Ophelucus. I didn't. Did you? Yeah. And, and if and if uh, the Zodiac Queen didn't, uh, nobody did. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> 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 Please take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> a couple grains. So, so. How do you spell it? What? Ophelucus? Yes, O P H I U C U S. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, C H U S. Oh, that's what you got. I don't have that. That's what Wikipedia has. Okay. 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 Um, I guess it doesn't matter. Just pronounce it. Um, the idea of our being there, we, we talked about even before we got to this point, we talked about even last year building a bridge uh, between the two places. Mm -hmm. But we did not know how that bridge would be constructed or what the next move would be. So, uh, so um, I think right now we are, we are at a critical junction in this whole, on, on this whole spiritual journey. I think we are at a very critical junction. I think it is imperative that we do not lose focus. It is up to you, uh, those of you who are very supportive of us and what we do to help us to stay focused by questions, by continued support, et cetera, okay? When we, when we are in here or when we are at Great in Faith, we got, uh, we, we have both sides. And when I say both sides, I'm talking about um, esoteric and church moved into the esoteric. So we can see it all. And it brings us to, it should bring us rather, uh, to a place where the pieces of the puzzle are beginning to um, expose the picture that the puzzle represents. It, it's like putting the puzzle together and you look at something and you think it's one thing, but when you finish the puzzle or get more of it, you see it's not. That's the reason we have to stay focused and not out, we cannot assume that we know what's coming next. Uh, we cannot try to project what, what, what's coming next, or if we don't feel it or don't have an inkling as to what something represents, we need to just step back from it and let it come to us, as did the, the site uh, that, that uh, came to Janice. Now, this is one of the things that I, I, have, I did not mention, I just thought about it. Um, every one of us, before we left that place, had one desire to know what all that meant. 
That was a single desire that we had, to know the meaning of that. And no sooner we get back, it reveals itself. I wasn't looking for it. That's what was weird. It came up from something else I was searching for. And, and, and that's why I reference the fact that it found you, mm -hmm. as opposed to you finding it. So that, again, is, is not coincidental. The, the old concept of, of things being coincidental was coined in order to put a wall between this temporary world and, what, and what's real. There are no coincidences, none. Everything happens for a reason. And, and when you look at the, the, um, the zodiac, the same way it is positioned in the circle, that's, that is the way um, Israel did it, that is the way the Egyptians did it. Why is it not different? The structure. And, but when you, when you, the further you get from Egypt or from, from um, the Hebrews, uh, the more humanistic it becomes. We went to the bookstore and we were looking for just whatever, you know how we're in the bookstore. It was like a child in a toy factory. When Janice ended up <coughs> with the book on the Zodiac, I have one on Genesis. Roy has one on Meditations of Genesis. And Leviticus. And, yeah, and Leviticus. When we sat on the plane, I was reading, oh, well, I actually perused the book that Janice said, I do not read those books, because every one I've ever bought, I, I gave them to Janice. Um, this one I could read, and it made more sense. And when she said to me that this is the best that she's ever read, mm -hmm. then I began reading even more, and things began to click. Everything that I was reading in that book, I was also reading in Genesis. Ron was reading Meditation of Genesis and in Le Leviticus. All of these concepts were the same. We could not possibly have haphazardly chosen those books. That was not the first time we'd gone to that bookstore. The only difference between this time and the last time, we didn't have much time. That's the only difference. And even with the suggestion that we go into the bookstore the morning that we was going to leave, it was like, you've got to be kidding me. The flight's out at 155, bookstore over at 10. Are you kidding me? We'll never make that plan. So, so we chose to go with, and, and, and honestly, when we went to that bookstore that night, we were not supposed to get there in time because we had 35 minutes before the store was going to close. We left probably like, what, 7.30, 7.35? After they were closing. Yeah, and, and we got right into the store and had all the time that we needed. And when we completed what we were doing, this um, seemingly, um, I, this um, shaman came through the door and his energy, oh my God, I can't explain the power of his energy. And they closed the doors. I mean, that was it. So none of these things are or without purpose. None of them are. So again, I say to you, we, we, we did not go to Philly for vacation. We did not go to Philly for a Sunday school convention. We did not go to Philly uh, to hang out with my relatives. We did not go to Philly to make a name for ourselves. We did not go to Philly, period. We were drawn for a reason. And one of the strongest places of, of the flow of energy was in Canada. Mm. When we sat in that recovery, and the room that we sat in was you know, much bigger than this. It was very small. Yeah, was but <clears throat> the guy who wanted us to come has never seen a broadcast. But he says to George, 
At first it was, I want their presence. Then when there was a question about whether that we're going, he said, I need their presence. He didn't know us. He didn't know anything about us. Why did he need the presence? That speaks volumes to me. To be beckoned by someone who knows nothing about you. It's almost like the centurion coming to Jesus. I heard about you. How did you hear? You know, how did he hear? It had to be an internal thing. Maybe it was Ophiuchus who opened his eyes to who we are. And, and when we move as a union, everybody notices. We have never gone anywhere where people did not recognize, subconsciously maybe, because I remember last year when we went up, when we went to the museum, there was a crowd on the steps and they moved. We didn't ask them to move, we were going to go around them, but they spread it. it. It's like there was something that knows, something within that knows. And, and I'm not exaggerated. If anything, I'm understating what we have experienced. But there is no exaggeration at all. Now, let me say that those of you who are extremely supportive, you will continue to receive what you need to be supportive, but also for you to make what to for you to have what you need. That will always be there. Because if you give a prophet a glass of water, you get a prophet's reward. Everything you need will always be there. You don't have to worry about it. And, and I want to end it by saying something in a few moments, but I want to check first. Sheldon, uh, Janice, you have anything or anyone else in the room for that matter? Uh, the only other thing is with the, um, I thought we were going to go back to it, the animals that represent the different okay, nations. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, when you were talking about uh, all the other animals being wild, not only that, I think is a connection with uh, Greek mythology as well, with um, some of the labors of Hercules. Um, for example, the boar, and we were talking about not a buffalo being used, but a boar, which was one of the labors of Hercules, but the boar is portrayed as being this uh, savage, uh, hideous beast that they seek to, well, that basically, um, Hercules is not to kill, but to go and capture, and which he does so, and he pretty much outsmarts it. Um, the bull, however, even though he was to go and capture the bull, the bull was the sacred uh, bull. So the bull um, was in, in the hierarchy uh, a lot higher than the, uh, the other animals. Um, the elephant, which I'm still looking for and I'm not uh, quite sure about, I know the uh, the esoteric uh, means uh, what the elephant actually represents in the other parts of the um, of the world, but I'm not sure of the direct uh, connection to Greek mythology. But the elephant usually uh, represents um, pretty much uh, being very very peaceful, but also being uh, stuck uh, in the right brain and illusionary um, and things like that. So they look at that as being uh, you know very very creative. It's being negative as well because it's not very uh, intellectual. Um, and then the tiger, I think the tiger was just meant on purpose to, to throw people uh, off, like not to give that sense of pride, but in um, Greek mythology, the lion is slain. Um, that's what Hercules is sent to do, which is to slay the lion. Okay, that's it. So, okay, I think the tiger is, it represents invisibility. We, just, we don't exist. You're there, but you're not there. Everything about you is false. And, and if you look at, at, the, at the, um, the flow of the history as it relates to the African, that's what we get. Non-existent. It does not matter who comes into this country. We are always treated as being invisible. Not important. Not caring whether we live or die. That's how we treat it. Regardless of who comes in this country. Well, it's, it's certainly a continent uh, that even today, I think, it has, it's, uh, people have struggled to try to bring any of its history, spiritual, political, or whatever, to some kind of recognition and to add that into the discussion. 
I mean, you're up to your eyeballs in Europe, Asia. South America is kind of a transition in between, sort of. But Africa, I think, is still. And you think, yeah. think that you, I, I remember clearly when, especially in history classes or geography, they talked about the dark continent. Yes. And they were not talking about the skin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were talking about lack of intelligence. They were talking about ignorance. They were talking about uncivilized, the dark continent. That's the reference that was made constantly to Africa. And we have to bring, we have to reconcile that. What I mean by that is this, we cannot buy into that, neither can we um, harbor hatred or anger or discontentment because of that. We have to recognize it for what it is and keep it moving. Why? Because if we don't, we get stuck. Remember that word stuck? We get, we get stuck. And we don't want to be stuck. So, 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 we, <laughs> so we want, if we want to move forward, we have to make sure that that's what we do. That we continuously seek the light and regardless of what we see in terms of the Supreme Court decisions, the history of, of our existence, it doesn't matter what it is, we cannot allow that to shift our focus. And when that um, Voters Act, the Voters' Right um, was, think bill was um, gutted, initially I felt it. And when I say I felt it, I felt it deeply. And for a few moments, there was some revisiting of the things that we went through to get people registered. The things that we went through to make sure that um, the laws were being enforced. But then I had to pull myself back. And guess how I was able to be pulled back? You caused it to happen. It's your fault that it happened. Light reveals darkness. So well, the more we seek light, the more chaos we're going to uncover. And, and, and the chaos is uncovered to be brought to order. And I'm, I can't sit here and tell you step one, step two, step, because it doesn't work like that at all. Well, when we were standing in that courtyard and Nick said that we had to go back to the beginning and we had to reorganize um, the very government itself. And he said it's done and that it will be fulfilled when Philly comes to South Carolina. Well, I was really disturbed too. But then I was talking to um, Evelyn and I was telling her about Philly, and and then all of a sudden it hit me. Okay, if the energy has been reorganized now, even though they meant for for that ruling not to be for our good, it is going to be for our good, because the spiritual essence of it is that. If the energy has shifted and is reorganized, there won't be any need for that law anymore. See, this is, there has been a shift in you. That's not an observation, that's prophetic. It's not just what you say, it's how you say it and how, it, how deeply it resonates. And I cannot explain to you how I can, I know the difference between the prophetic and the statement or a question. I feel it, I, I feel it deeply. And I suppose it's because of the energy, I don't know. But that's my expectation now. That's our expectation because 
the Creator has sent us a word concerning it. That's important that we recognize this. Anything, any questions, statements? Okay. This is what I want to leave with us. I read um, where uh, <clears throat> the sages were talking about peace. And I read that peace is the uh, vessel for blessing. And the body is the vessel for peace. I read that when we were sitting in the airport. But when we began to board the plane, it clicked. This is what I got from that. When you are at peace with yourself, not only do you become a blessing, but you also attract a blessing. It is not the physical, the material, it's the spiritual. And when you attract the spiritual, and when you become a spiritual blessing, everything that you require comes to you like a magnet regardless of how it how difficult things may seem to be sometimes the difficulty of it all is designed to keep you focused pain reminds us that we're living so if you focus on anything Focus on being at peace with yourself. Not because you don't want trouble. Not because you don't want agony. But because you desire to be a spiritual blessing. Simply by your presence. And I think that's what happened in Camden. We were a unit at peace with each other. At peace with ourselves. And that's the reason that man wanted us. And if you remember, on Thursday night, it was crowded, and we were split up. You know, we were in different places. In Camden, it was crowded, but he made sure that all of us sat together, either behind each other or in front. But we were <coughs> grouped together. So that in itself says to me that everything that needs to be recovered in that place is going to do, is, is done because of the, the blessing of the peace. The peace that we have and the blessing that we are. Does that make sense to you? So, I was just gonna say, so I was just wondering, in anticipating, and maybe that's, uh, I need to be careful about that, the idea of Philadelphia coming to South Carolina, makes me want to know more about South Carolina. And I've sort of felt that since I've been here. You know, I, years ago I never knew why did I, why, why am I winding up in this state? And I'm not suggesting there's any particular significance per se. But it is. Well, but I mean, I wouldn't have picked this state in a million years. Me? When I left, I intended to stay. I mean, it's my parents' fault. Yeah. Well, right. when, I, when I left, I did not intend to come My out. children could say that to me, but anyway. <laughs> so. So what the hell is it? Excuse my French. Yeah. You know? okay. So the, what, 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 in the similar way that you were talking about City Hall and the Center in Philadelphia, I don't even know where to dig, let alone I'm about to tell you where to dig. Okay. It is not your French that you need to be aware of. Um, I'm not, I, I, you dig at the Confederate Museum in Charleston. That's where you find the truth. And the truth is there not because somebody wrote it. The truth is there because the documents are there. The original documents are there. That's what you did for the truth.
Now, I'm glad you said that, Richard, because I have forgotten something. Philadelphia is coming to South Carolina next year. But I think that's something totally different than what Nick was talking about. I, I believe that it's August. It's August 17th. And the reason I say that is because not only will the authorities, and I use that very loosely, please, accept it that way, who represent everything we've done and all the changes we desire or have seen to be needed will be in South Carolina. And which means that all the people will also be, you know, in South Carolina in terms of their energy. But also, Foundation, Great New Faith, the Clocks, the Richards, and the Henderson Speakers family, all will be coming together at that place at the same time. And I think that's significant. I'm not, I have not asked the teachers to make sure that they're there. I have not asked that. Because I feel like if they are supposed to be, you'll be there. That's how I feel. Now, what helped me to see that is I remember some significant things that transpired when we meet when we met rather than passed at the house. The storm thing. Um, you know, clear the, the, the weather's clear over the house, but when you leave there's a storm all around. Um, the um, extremely dark evenings but all of a sudden the moon uh, begins to shine in place in a place where it doesn't normally be at that time of night, those kinds of things. So I think it's significant that um, that the gathering takes place. And I think it's also significant that is union. Because that's where the seed of secession was sown. In union. Not in Charleston, not in Columbia, but in union. And that's what I think. Does that make sense? Does it resonate as your next maybe? So that's that's where we are with that. Okay, now Keep in mind, 17th is not a work day. We do not intend, I don't anyway, intend to, for us to be somewhere off in the corner discussing stuff, even though we might do that mm -hmm. a little bit. I don't expect that, okay? Okay, we're done.